thyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH, which is derived from neurons located in the hypothalamus, regulates the synthesis and secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH from thyrotrophs located in the anterior pituitary. TRH is a tripeptide that is synthesized from a 242 amino acid precursor called the prepro TRH. Each prepro TRH yields six TRH tripeptides through a series of enzymatic modifications. First, the six pro TRH peptides are cleaved from the larger prepro TRH precursor. Next, the peptide bonds between the arginine and glutamine and between the glycine and lysine are enzymatically cleaved, which yields six four amino acid peptides. Finally, the glycine is enzymatically converted to an amide while the glutamine is converted into a pyroglutamine, which produces the final TRH tripeptide. TRH tripeptides are synthesized by a number of cells throughout the body, but the TRH that regulates the synthesis and release of TSH comes from neurons located in the arcuate nucleus and median eminence within the hypothalamus. After TRH is synthesized in the cell body, it is transported down the axon and released by exocytosis into the hypophysial portal system, where it travels a short distance to the anterior pituitary. Once it reaches the thyrotrophs, it binds the TRH receptors and stimulates the synthesis and release of TSH as we discussed in the previous lesson. So what regulates the synthesis and release of TRH? Well, a number of physiological factors stimulate or inhibit the synthesis and release of TRH. For example, exposure to cold stimulates the synthesis and release of TRH, which is seen as a protective measure. As the body temperature decreases, the thyroid gland responds by increasing the metabolic rate, which in turn gives off heat and raises body temperature. Likewise, stress stimulates the synthesis and release of TRH, which is also a protective measure. Now, stress puts us in an alert mode by increasing heart rate, muscle contractility, and metabolic rate, which are a part of the fight or flight response. Now, whether it's stress, cold, or other factors that stimulate the synthesis and release of TRH, they do this by activating neurons that form synapses on TRH synthesizing neurons, which release neurotransmitters that in turn activate G-protein coupled receptors. Activation of these receptors leads to an increase in intracellular cyclic AMP, which leads to the activation of downstream effectors that stimulate the transcription of the TRH gene and enzymes that modify the pre-pro TRH peptide. One of these key downstream effectors is phosphorylated CREB. Phosphorylation of CREB causes it to bind the cyclic AMP response element within the promoter of target genes like TRH. This is important to know because factors that inhibit the transcription of TRH do so by displacing phosphorylated CREB from the Cre binding site. This is how T3 inhibits the synthesis of TRH. It works like this. Plasma T4 is first converted into T3, but instead of this happening in TRH synthesizing cells, it happens in neighboring tannocytes, which are specialized cells found in the ventricle of the brain. Tannocytes take up T4 by the monocarboxylate transporter. Then type 2 deiodinase converts T4 into T3. The T3 is then transported along the tannocyte processes and released, where it is taken up by TRH synthesizing neurons via the monocarboxylate transporter. Now, interestingly, mutations that result in the loss of function of the monocarboxylate transporter located in tannocytes and TRH synthesizing cells are associated with rare cases of hyperthyroidism. Now, inside the cell, T3 binds the thyroid hormone receptor complex, which causes it to translocate from the cytosol into the nucleus, where it binds the Cre element within the promoter of the TRH and TRH-related genes, which in turn inhibits transcription of these genes by displacing the phosphorylated CREB. 
So, in summary, it is the balance between inhibitory and stimulatory factors that control the synthesis and release of TRH, which in turn regulates the synthesis and release of TSH, which ultimately regulates the synthesis and release of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. As the plasma concentration of T3 and T4 increase, they loop back to directly inhibit the synthesis and release of TRH, as well as directly inhibit the synthesis and release of TSH. In the next two lessons, we'll talk about hyper and hypothyroidism.